Ian Birmingham, how are you? All good, Jamie, yeah, thanks. We're here at Richmond Park, you have some news to share. What is it, please? Yeah, I um, suppose after 13, 13 years at the club, um, I'm going to leave at the end of the season. Um, pro- more than likely going to retire from professional football. Um, a great journey that I've been on. I've been here 13 years um, and just really, really good memories, I suppose. And it's a... Uh, I'm content and I'm, it's the right time, I suppose. Um, and yeah, no, I'm looking forward to the future, obviously. So why now and why the end of the season? Um, it's sort of been in my mind for quite a number of years now. Um, sort of when, when am I going to finish? I suppose when you get to 30, you're sort of looking to see when you are going to finish. I went back to college and I'd done a degree just to have something in my back pocket for when I do. Um, when I do, decide to, to call it a day. And... Um, yeah, at the end of last season, um, when we won the cup, obviously probably one of the best days of my career. Um, I was thinking of doing it then. What better way to go out? But I just said, no, I'll just give it another year. And I you know, spoke to to Garrett, um, and I told him last year. I said, look, no matter what happens this year, I'm I'm, I'm going to leave at the at the end of next year. And um, that's the decision I've come to, and I'm I'm content with it. Well, congratulations. There's going to be so many messages on social media and to your own phone and stuff, I'm sure, when this announcement goes out. 13 seasons at any club in any league in the world just doesn't really happen. You're the record appearance maker overall with 452. 352 of those in the league makes you the record appearance maker for the club in the league. And 24, no one has played more European games than St. Pat- for you, uh, than you for St. Pat's. And you brought with you four of your most memorable and famous jerseys to help us talk through the journey. Yeah, um, the the first one on the left there is the my very first European game um, against IBV of Iceland. Um, that was in two thousand and eleven. We went on a great run that year. I think IBV. I think we played. Um, I think it was Karagandi in the next round, maybe, and then Karpati. Um, but uh, that's the that's that one. Uh, the first European campaign. I think the next one in is the two thousand and fourteen Cup final. I think it's for all the supporters it'll um, live long in the memory as the first the uh, Pats team to win a cup in fifty three years. Another great occasion. Um the to see the supporters, the emotion, the how proud they were of the team and, and we, we could feel it, we, we fed off it and ultimately we got over the line. I think we'd been beaten by thirty two years previous in, in the final, so it was sort of a bit of a payback as well. But uh no brilliant, another brilliant uh, occasion. So we're going to go back a year for the next jersey, which is the league-winning one from 2013. Yeah, 2013. Um, again, I think from 2012, we had been beaten in the cup final, but we felt there was something building. Um, we, had a, we had a right team, um, really good players, technically very good. And that year, defensively, I think we only conceded 15 goals, which was which is a really, really good return. And I think we were so potent up top with, with Christy, Conan, Bisto, and um, Forrester, um, so we were they were all contributing goals. Um, I remember going down to the game against Sligo. I think it was on a Sunday afternoon, um, five o'clock. I think we just needed to win um, um, to win the league, and just going down, I just knew we just knew that we were going to win. Um, a great performance, and then the celebrations after will live lo- uh, long in my memory as well. Um, I'll always. Remember Daryl Cavanagh um, belting out his two or three ain't bad tune that I think we all still sing now every time the club uh, does well or whatever. So uh, just great memories and again another great time. I just when the final whistle blew on that game, I remember dropping to my knees, just relief sort of that I was after actually it was my first trophy in professional football and just the relief and and how happy I was. It was just I'll always uh, remember it. And another thing you'll always remember, as we all will, is the Aviva Stadium last November, and that's the last of the four. That is the cup final winning jersey. That is the captain's cup final winning jersey from the dramatic penalty shootout against Bowes a couple of days before you became a dad for the yeah. first time, and um, that was just a perfect week. And, and that jersey, I know, is going to get framed and go straight up on your wall. Yeah, um, obviously, uh, Leah had had Pippa on the Friday, and. Um, then obviously we had the cup final. Probably that was probably the best best day in my life, and then probably the best day in my footballing career. Two days later, um, just 
I've so many memories of the of the build up to it. Um, don't really remember much of the game to be to be quite honest. I, I remember in in when Chris missed the penalty, Robbie Benson. I can't, can't remember exactly what he said, but he said something like, "Oh, what goose here or whatever." I said, "No, V will bail us out." But ultimately, V he didn't say when they they hit the bar twice. But I just knew that we that we that we were going to win it. Um, and just going up to to lift the trophy, just uh, it's 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 a feeling I can't describe. And um, just even now, I'm just getting a little bit. It's just I've so many memories. I could talk about that for for an hour here. I could about just all the different little moments leading up to it. Um, but yeah, now just probably you know, now it was the best best day in my footballing career by a, by a mile. Yeah, one league, two FAI cups, two league cups. I know you were suspended for the second of those two league cup finals, but you were involved in the previous three games. You know all the Presidents Cup finals, the European matches, the memories off the pitch, the people you've met, the friendships you've made, the funny stories, the sad stories. I've got loads of questions, but how would you would you try and sum up? The thirteen years in 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 your own words, um, a roller coaster, I suppose. Um, I know it's probably just a, a generic, but it, it really was. We've had some really good highs, and we've had some lows. Two thousand seventeen was pretty low for me, um, and then obviously the high last year as well. So there's been highs and lows, but way more highs than than lows, I suppose. And uh, yeah, just great crack as well. <laughs> We've had some characters in, in in the teams and just some really good people around the place. I could go off and start naming a lot of fans that I, that I've become personally friends with, and um, then staff members, I suppose, that I've got close to, and it's just so many of them. But um, just they've all contributed to 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 my career and supposedly my life really because I've been here 13 years, and I think football is all I've ever done, and I suppose Pats is my club, and it's a uh, just brilliant time. Let's roll the clock back to the 6th of January 2010 and a young, fresh face Ian Burnwell. I'm not sure what hairstyle you had at the time. The tracksuit was definitely too big for you, but you signed for St. Pat's under Pete Batten and I bet you didn't think you'd be sitting here 13 seasons later. No, um, I remember that picture with the, I think I don't know whose top it was, <laughs> but it was the triple XL, I think, a wee top. Um, <laughs> Getting the picture taken, but I remember it was a. Uh, I think it was snowing out at the time, and I think it was. I think it was Phil Mooney and Pete. We went up to the Black Lion up and had a bit of lunch and stuff like that, and uh, I was at the sign, and then that was the start of it, I suppose. And um, Pete was the one that brought me into professional football, um, by signing me for UCD, and then ultimately signing me for Pats. Um, two big moments in, in my footballing career, and probably. The man that I have the most respect for, the most time for in football, because he was so good to me, and we still have a great relationship now. Um, and he's I could trust him in my life, and that's it's the most thing I could say about him. But he's a, a great man and a great friend of mine, and I'm thankful for for him to have the impact that he did on my career. And what type of same paths were you coming into then, in terms of you mentioned Pete, who was the manager, you know, the staff, the team at the time. Where was the club at when you were coming in? Uh, I was in a transition, I think, I suppose, the, the, the previous couple of seasons, I think uh, the team hadn't been doing well and I think they just peaked come in at the back end of the 2009 season, maybe saved the club from relegation, I think they were sort of struggling down, down the bottom and I think there was only probably three or four players kept from, from that season, I think Damien Lynch, Stewie Bourne and um, Gary Rogers, sorry, Ryan Goy as well, I think. And it was sort of just a little bit of change and P came in and we done really well. Um, qualified for Europe, played in Europe the following season and um, we got the two semi-finals in the FAI Cup. So uh, no, it, was, it was good times and then obviously at the end of the 2011 season, um, P had left and, and, and Liam Buckley took over then. That next few years, as I mentioned, the, the Cup heartbreak of 2012 first and then you've gone through briefly kind of the league in 2013 and, and then the Cup in, in 2014. You were at the top of your game then, you were in the PFI team of the year those three seasons, in an unbelievable St. Pat's team as well. What stands out for those couple of seasons when things started to go really, really well for the club and for yourself personally on the pitch? I think when I when I came back into pre-season, because the lads were already back in that 2012 season, so as I said, I signed late, um, late in the day, so it was probably a week late into pre-season, but I felt I went in with a bit between my teeth after sort of that little bit of a scenario. 
Um, and I just went strength to strength. Obviously, the players that were in the team, it was easy to play with, and they, they, we all brought out the best in each other. I think we all complemented each other. Um, the different different players in different positions sort of we struck up good relationships. Um, and I think we had Tra Trevor Crawley was the coach at the time, and a really really top coach, and um, he had us well drilled, and we were we were a really well drilled team. We played some lovely football. We all well organised, um, and. 2012, we got to the cup final, we got beaten, but I think it's, it sort of set us up. I think for that bit of success, then because we knew we knew what we had in the in the in the in the group, and we knew sort of that we, we could be successful. And I think we took confidence from that 2012 season, um, and just brought her in. And I think we were really really good in 2013, and then obviously 2014 when we won the, the the two big ones, the league and the cup. Yeah, the league win in 2013, 71 points from. 33 matches at that stage. It was a 12-team league. Dundalk under Stephen Kenny, I think at the time, he, he was not long in the door, but were chasing hard. Sligo were chasing hard. They were the three teams, and in the end, won by three points from Dundalk and, and five ahead of Sligo. But but things were tight, and, and some very famous games, particularly towards the end, and, and the one that's, that's often spoke about is, is the one here against Sligo but from that league winning season is there a moment for you that, that stands out as the one apart from when, when you knew you had won the league that, that stands um, out I, I'd say like a signing when we signed Daryl Cabinet from Cork I think he was he just came in and just lit the place up um, off the pitch he was a great character great banter um, sort of real real jolly character and great crack and got everybody going off the pitch and then when he was on the pitch he was electric he was electric that year and I think if you look back some of the big moments he was he was involved in them um, and I think just signing someone like that just brought an extra bit of improvement out the extra little bit that we, we maybe needed but uh, that's, that sort of stands out for me um, but look we had a, we had a great team you look at Christie and Bisto up front they, they flip flopped through the season in, in terms of different games suit with each suit with different, in a different player so um, Conan obviously contributing goals Chris contributing goals um, as I said, we only conceded fifteen. I could be wrong, but I think we only conceded fifteen goals that season, um, which is for a back four is, is really good. So um, it was just a really good side and a really good team. What were the celebrations like that week, that night? And the red cow comes up a lot when we talk about St Pat's celebrations. There's so many local bars and places around Inchicore as well, but. The red cow comes up a lot with regards to league wins and cup wins. Yeah, I, there's still videos I do look back on and just ah, brilliant, brilliant times, pictures I, I look back on. And then obviously the next day down at McDowell's, as I said about uh, Daryl Cavanagh, he was down singing a song and I sort of became a Pat's anthem then. And yeah, just ah, just great memories, just great memories, um, great celebrations going on for a, for a long time. And yeah, just. Amazing. That brings us to the cup winning season the following year. Um, I wasn't with Sympath at the time, so I was actually working on the radio. And I just, I remember the emotion of it. And you're up in the press box, miles from the pitch. You can just, you can just see the stories going on about 53 years and losing the cup final a couple of years before. Same opposition. Uh, cup final day, cup final week. <sighs> What's what? What's the memories there? Yeah, like I'll just go back to say just the last year. But like last year, I enjoyed it so much because I, I I soaked it all in. Like, but back in two thousand fourteen, I probably didn't it didn't do that enough. Um, so the memories like sort of little bits and pieces. There's not there's not a lot I do. I remember just just like friends or family being there. Um, just like. I think when you get to these cup finals and, 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 and you're winning leagues and all, it's it's the it's the joy you bring to other people that um that gets me sort of that my family and my friends can have days out and different things like that. Um but in terms of that year two thousand fourteen, I think Liam tried to take the pressure off off the group, um because there was a lot of pressure on us in terms of like all the fifty three years and uh, like there was a lot of pressure on the group. Obviously, we had won the cup or the, the league the previous year, so there was a bit of pressure on us to to, to go and win. But Liam sort of took the took the pressure off us leading up to the game, and and, and okay, it was just I, I do remember the, the Christy Fagan goals, and like he's just I know the, the nickname here, big goals, but 
he, he just come up so many times, come up trumps and, and scored the goals and what a player, what a legend of the club and um, just wild celebrations then when, when, when he scored that second goal and I think the Brian Kerr was on commentary was he and the uh, just stuff like that will will stick out a little bit, um, and then obviously going and celebrating again. Um, they're the they're the, the days you remember. Yeah, because I'm sure at one nil up when the out of time board goes up four minutes, and you're thinking, well, I don't know what you were thinking, but certainly, I'm sure the supporters thinking, well, two years ago we lost and we haven't won for fifty three years and so on and so forth. But then when Christie goes in and, and and scores the clincher, and that whole release valve of the Pats fans, the Pats players, coaches, Brian on the commentary. Like that that must have been and I know you probably don't remember it exactly, but just some relief to go, Well, we've won it now. Yeah. I I look back at the goals I could go back looking and reminiscing and stuff like that. But uh I remember Sean Sean Hoare had it made a big clear into his head. I think it was Barry Malloy made a a bit of a mistake and just see Christy going around Jared Doherty and just tapping it into an empty net as Brian said. Um and then just the oil celebrations after just knowing that we had done it then just uh, amazing and as I said your friends and your family um, just and even the fans just people that support you all year just there for that day out and that we can actually bring that joy and bring that joy to them it's just it's, it's a special feeling the trophy is actually in the room with us which we'll talk about from last season in a few minutes but if we if we try and stick in in the order of the years here so the league is won in 2013 the cup is won in, in 2014 Brilliant side, brilliant team, brilliant football. The next couple of years, 15, 16, are, are two League Cups. You know, Dundalk, Cork kind of take over the mantle in terms of pushing at the League and FAI Cup level. How do you reflect on, on those couple of seasons after the, the glory of the Cup and the League in, in the two back-to-back years? Yeah, they, they would have been disappointing, I suppose. We, we won the League Cup, I think, in them two years. So, but looking back, it was disappointing. We probably felt we should have been closer to closer to the top. But when you look back now, we were sort of there was a little bit of a, a trend there that we were sort of faltering and we were losing players and maybe not signing uh, as much quality, maybe or whatever. But uh, them two years, obviously, we got we won the the League Cups, but ultimately they were disappointing years and um, in terms of what we wanted to achieve we wanted to go on and try and challenge for the league challenging the cups that we had done the previous couple of years and it didn't happen and um, ultimately it was sort of the start of a few years where we were weren't relevant um, I suppose yeah and one of those years is 2017 and that's a, a mixed feelings year for you I'm sure because Ger O'Brien went from being the captain to the being the assistant manager and you were named as club captain, which is a huge honour. As you mentioned earlier on, St. Pat is your club. But that year on the pitch was fairly dramatic for very different reasons and it took a real huge push towards the end to ensure that St. Pat's remained in the Premier Division. What do you remember about that season and particularly the, the closing months and a couple of big, big wins here at Richmond, one against Cork, I think? Yeah, look, uh, I wouldn't... Uh, I as a captain, I wouldn't have seen myself maybe as, as being the captain, but as Paul was Liam gave me, gave me the honour of being the captain and maybe because of the consistency of my performances and the way I trained and played or whatever, it, yeah, because I wouldn't be one to go around shouting in the dressing room or, or anything like that. I, I, sort of, I sort of got it in my own way of, of, of being a captain and, and, and the, way I, the way I done it um, would have been different to, so to say, to like say Chris or Joe now, everybody would have been different. Um, but... It was a really difficult year to be fair. Um it was one it was a uh, we it was a difficult year because we were struggling. We were really struggling at the time and um we were losing games and I was taking taking everything home, I was taking everything personal as if it was that I was it was it was on me like all this because I was the captain and I I put myself through a terrible time I suppose, uh, just always constantly thinking about football all the time and um but when I look back I scored five goals that year I think in the Oak and I've scored some important goals so when I look back I did really contribute in, 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 a, in a positive way to sort of get us out of the trouble that we were in but it also helped me um, in terms of I used to take when we lose a game it'd be bothering me for the week and whatever but I sort of learned to, to change that then um, in terms of you lose a match we train the next morning at whatever time, 10, half 10, we're finished, we're out there at 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock on a Saturday, it's, it's done, I forget about it, we're going into a fresh week, and likewise a win, because if I had kept going on the way I was, taking a, taking a home, and 
being annoyed and analysing every little thing, what could I have done better? Like, I would have gone off my rocker. Um, so that was a turning point as well, how I, how I dealt with losses and how I dealt with, with even wins. Like, obviously, we celebrate for it that night and or whatever that then few minutes after the game but then it's gone you're on to the next one because um i suppose you can't dwell on these things and i know some people beat themselves up about losing games but to me that year was a turning point where i just said you know what you can't do that you have to just get it out of your mind as quick as you can and um, there's nothing you can do go home watch the game have a look and see what you could could have done better and um, but then it's gone saturday morning and after you finish training you mentioned the big goals you scored that season. 15 goals competitively for the club in total, 12 in the league, 3 in cups. Do you have a best one, a favourite one, a favourite couple, and what are they and why? And we'll dig them out and uh, we'll pop them up at some um, stage this week, I'm sure. If not, people will find them on the St. Pat's YouTube channel. My favourite one is the header against Rovers in that 2017 season. Um, it was like young Christy Fagan in the box. <laughs> no, uh, it was just, I think, was it Owen Garvin been playing? I think Owen Garvin played a short short free kick to Conan Bourne and Conan took him down the line but I sort of knew he was checking back onto his left and he was just going to deliver and I just saw it. I think Ryan Connolly was marked me but I sent him to shops <laughs> and uh, just got across him and headed it over the, over the keeper but uh, it was an important win and it was uh, it brought out a lot of emotion in me because I knew it was important we needed to, we needed wins on the board and um, again it was a big moment that year to, to, to go and beat Rovers obviously um, the Dublin Derby as well so but that would that be me that be my favourite goal, yeah. Yeah, because obviously different managers have different preferences about who they send up to the box, and your height would suggest maybe you're one that might be left back on the halfway line as a defender. But when you've been sent up, I mean, even was it last season or the season before to one of the COVID seasons, the the, the ninety six minute header in Sligo, oh, yeah. for example, from I think it was Dara Burns or whoever took the corner. Like you were often sent up, and I remember watching in the Liam Buckley years, watching you guys training out in the Alta, practicing the set pieces. And you were always in the box doing various different runs and, and, and backed by your managers to get big goals at various times. Yeah, well, I wouldn't have been, not most, I wouldn't be aggressive in the air, I suppose, uh, but just sort of movement wise, I would have done all right. My trademark was just trying to get across the front post for a little flick. Uh, but uh, now it's sent up the odd time, I suppose, and I've scored a few headed goals. I think there's a good chunk of them that are headed goals that I scored. So um, I didn't score a lot, but the ones that I did, uh, uh, a good few headed goals, yeah. Yeah, talk to me about Ian Birmingham, the captain, and, and you mentioned that you're you're not a screamer and a shouter. You know, you're you're so soft spoken. But for me, you're you're a leader by example in in what you do, how you train, how you prepare, and most importantly, how you play and the work rate and the effort and that. You know, I think you you've you've been a great person around the club that people can come and talk to, whether they be younger players, senior players, managers, people that run the club about various different issues. But how would you sum up Bermo, the captain, since you have been? Yeah, that's exactly. I try to lead by how I train, how I play, um, and hopefully I can rub off on, on, on the rest of the lads. Um, in, like in terms of off-the-pitch stuff, like I'm always there for, for any of the young lads, for, for anybody really, senior players, even if they come, need to come and talk to me or whatever, if, or if anything happens, any of the lads, I'm always there. I'm always texting them to see how they are, giving them calls to see how they are or whatever. Um, if there's any issues at all, um, but yeah, I'm just there to help and just to, to just to be to be someone that they can come to come to speak to. And um, as I said, hopefully they could learn off me as as the way I, the way I trained or the way I played. Um, yes, as I said, I'm just being myself. I wasn't trying to be any anything special. I wasn't trying to go around shouting just to say I'm because I'm the captain. That's not the way it goes. But um, yeah, no, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, as I said, I grew into it as the years went on and I found my own sort of niche and what I was good at and what I wasn't good at. Um, and I've obviously got help off other senior players when, when, when they've come into the club. They, they'd obviously helped me out as well. But no, I've really enjoyed it and um, it was a great honour. Um, as I said, I never would have thought I would have been a, been a captain, but um, it was a great honour and, and a privilege to be the captain of St. Pat's. What did you enjoy most about the captaincy and everything that went with that and is there some stuff that you also maybe didn't enjoy so much? Oh, I, I, walking out on a Friday night, leaving the lads out was, that was probably the, the that was probably the best. Um, just leaving the lads out and um, feeling like you're the main man I suppose and that's why sometimes the, the captaincy can bring, bring out improvement in sort of other players that might have been, say, I don't know, 
less confident maybe or whatever because you go out and you feel a million dollars as you're the, you're the main man here um, and I'm dragging these lads through it whether whatever way we have to do it um, and yeah that's just leading the lads out I suppose on a, on a Friday night and obviously in the big games European games the cup final last year walking out it's just really really special feeling and uh, one that I'm, I'm, I'm totally proud of have you enjoyed being a senior pro in, in recent years? And I mean, there's so many top young players that have come through in the last few years here um, that have needed the help of the likes of yourself and the other senior pros in the group and the coaches and the managers and stuff. But just, again, being that, you know, player first and foremost, but also captain and I'm just young lads coming in, maybe the train for the first time at 15, 16, like a lot of them have done and some of them have gone on to do great things. That you, you've been, you know, one of the people that they yeah. look up to and talk to and that sort of stuff. That's probably one of the the big things over the last few years. Obviously, as I got, as I've got that bit older, like we we tried to that not just me, but that all the senior lads. We tried to welcome all the young lads in because, in fairness, we'd we, we'd have a great crack. Like we'd be slagging them, we let them slag us back just to to make them feel sort of at ease. That because if they come up and they're nervous and they they, they go out onto the pitch and they're nervous, they're not going to be to be able to express themselves. So we tried to get that out of them as quick as we can and and um, make them feel welcome. And look, if if I'm talking to them as the captain of the club, or if Forrester's talking to them as probably one of the best players at the club, or they're probably going to feel at home real easy um, or real quickly, I suppose, and and be able to express themselves on the pitch then. Um, better than maybe if they're coming up and they're just being isolated with all the other young lads and I suppose I've had a better relationship with the younger lads over the last couple of years than maybe the senior lads have sort of latched onto them to try and to try and help them as best they can and um, obviously you see the likes of Darren and stuff going, going away it's, it's great to see and um, I'm sure there's going to be another, another uh, lovely load of them going over soon enough so it's great to see and, and it's, 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 it's one I'm totally proud of to see them all doing so well. Let's talk about Europe and there's so many wonderful and wild places that you've been to play European football for us in Pats, Bermo, a few that come to mind, Iceland, Kazakhstan, Ukraine, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Germany, Lithuania, Poland, Latvia, Luxembourg, Belarus and then of course the, the couple of European trips from this season as well and there's some great stories on and off the pitch here about travel and food and heat and hotels and roommates and matches. So Saints in Europe, Bermo involved in, in the games, you're, you're the all-time European uh, appearance holder for the club, as we mentioned, uh, 24 in total, tell me more. Yeah, I suppose uh, we've played against some really, really good teams, Legia Warsaw, Hanover, um, we've been to some mad places, Kazakhstan, um, Bosnia, it's places that you'd probably never visit um, other than through football. Now, great experiences in the game, great crack when you go away with the lads, it's all sorts of just just banter, um, bit of crack with the um, cards and just all different stuff like that. It's, it's good crack. And the challenges of, of some of the games on the pitch, whether they be the away games in some incredible stadiums, the, the home matches that have happened here at Richmond or in other places around Dublin for various reasons. Like as, as a footballer, they're the type of games I'm sure you, you, when you look back, you go, God, those games were, were proper, proper football matches to play in. Yeah, I think Richmond on the European night is, is a really, really special place. Uh, the place, obviously, you can't stand around the the Camac side, so it's always rocking, um, it's always sold out. Um, it's just a different buzz, I suppose, on the European night. And I think the opposition teams coming, coming to play us, they, they, don't expect, um, they don't expect that sort of walking into a sort of a, like a house and then out onto the pitch and the, the fans just so close to you. So, it's a sometimes it's a bit intimidating for the opposition, and it gives you a great chance. It's a, it is a good leveling leveling field for us, um, but then obviously when it comes to the third round or whatever, you've got to move, and you're really playing an away game, and you sort of lose that advantage of Richmond. But um, now again, really really good experiences in Europe, great times, and uh, as I said, been to some great places and and, and played some great teams. You must have felt as a football player, as a left back, that you were really, really being tested against some of the the best that Europe had to offer in terms of different wingers that you've played against, and whether you know the first leg was 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 home or away, first or second, and when away goals still counted, when results were on the line, when you're going through a couple of rounds and stuff, and again, I'm sure you'll watch back videos and photos and different bits and remember the the challenges of footballer of of what those a lot of those games were. Yeah, I I think. 
the ones that stand out of sort of Hanover and um, Legio Warsaw, proper stadiums against proper player, like proper team, like um, you can just see like just that the whole the, the whole setup of it was just like you just you were you felt like a proper footballer then, um, and yeah, as I said, just to play against them, that caliber of player to test yourself against the best. That's what any footballer wants to do: is test yourself against the best and, and to see how how you, how you can go. And I suppose we 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 done well over the years in Europe. Um, and we've had some good results, obviously some not so good as well, but it, all in all it's been a great experience I suppose and um, yeah, great times. Great times as well at the Aviva in November, I know we spoke kind of briefly about it there and um, I know you're going to get the jersey framed, I'm sure you have the captain's armband, the picture from the dressing room and, and you, you got to get around with the cup to various different places, whether it be to show your little daughter for the first time, your local pub. I know all of were great with your time in the schools and the local hospitals and nursing homes and hospices and all that sort of stuff as well. And again, they're the bits that maybe people don't generally see, but the 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 places that you got to go to with the, with the trophy after winning it and, and bringing, if it was five minutes of a smile to someone's face that was sick or that was ill or whatever. Like... Those type of things again. I'm, I'm sure you look back and I go, that was really nice. Yeah, hundred percent. I felt that after we won that. Um, I suppose the fans have been brilliant to us, you know. Like so, I just felt anybody that asked me, anybody, like I probably get a bit of stick for going around for so much, but I literally wanted to show it off um, because I'd gone through the career and you think you're gonna when you win your force and you think you're gonna it's gonna happen every year. It doesn't happen every year, and I knew I was coming to the end, sort of. I knew I was coming down the road, so. I wanted to make sure to give back to anybody. So anybody that texted me, anybody that got in contact with me, I was only too willing to go and, and show them the cup and, and get a couple of pictures or whatever it might be. As you say, if it takes five minutes to put a smile in someone's face, I'll, I'll happily do it, no problem. Um, yeah, I'll always look back on, on, on that and, and, and I was delighted that I was able to do it. Um, as I said, a couple of years ago, I probably didn't see us winning another trophy probably before I finished. So. The last couple of years maybe was, was really special for me and, and ones that probably I enjoyed the most in my career was probably the last, the previous two years to this season. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said, it was just, I just felt that I needed to give back to the, to the fans that supported us and so anybody that sort of wanted to get a picture with the cup or wanted to see the cup, we were only too willing to, 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 to do it. The fans overall and the role that they play in the club and, you know, the volunteer ethos and, you know, Lots of clubs are described as, as family clubs, but St. Pat's is the ultimate family club and, um, you know, particularly in the last couple of years with COVID and since they've come back and, you know, games home, games away, European trips, cup finals, they're there and they're always there and they're always there to support. And yes, at times our results aren't great, supporters won't be happy and will, you know, the odd time have them on, which they're fully entitled to, but... You know, 99 times out of 100, the, the, the people here are absolutely brilliant with you guys. What's that been like on the pitch for you? It's, it's, it is really special, I suppose. Fans wouldn't probably take any notice, but you, like, you could be having listen, people go through stuff off the pitch and whatever that may be. But whatever is going on off the pitch and you come down to Richmond and you play in front of them fans and they're shouting your name, singing your name and just supporting you, like, there's, there's nothing that could be that. Just everything just goes out of your mind, and you just constantly like it's it's a really special feeling playing in Richmond and, and the fans obviously right on top of you, shouting your name, singing your name, whatever it might be, just giving you that bit of encouragement. It's a uh, as I said, there's all that the, the the worries in the world just go away, and it's just you're just in the zone. I suppose it's it's hard to describe. I suppose, um, but again, that's one thing I'll miss is playing out in Richmond so was... and when they go with you on the road like if we stick with the cup final team for now and the Aviva being in Shakur effectively and the noise I, there was one stage in the second half or was it extra time where they sang for like 10 minutes straight um, and then you guys won the cup via the penalties and the bus is coming back and there's thousands here on the road outside McDowell's there's hundreds more in the Red Cow there's loads more in McDowell's the next day then there's so many people as you said coming to visit the cup, see the cup, etc, 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 those moments will live with you forever. Ah yeah, 100%. Um, like, as a, just the whole build up to, to that cup final, 
um, for me it was just like it was just it was perfect I suppose and there was just there's loads of other little things little memories that I have of that of the build up to that um, the night before in the hotel um, just there's loads of little small little snippets of, of things that I, I remember and um, as you say then just going back up to Red Cow friends and family up there and as I said earlier on like to give them them days out is, is really really special um, and we, we the night before actually in the hotel we we got a video from all our friends and family um, and it was just it was one of them moments where it was just it was, it was funny at one stage then you're kind of getting a bit emotional going how proud these people are of us um, it was really special and something that I'll, I'll always remember and then obviously Jürgen Klopp <laughs> giving us a little favi uh, but uh, now just just great and then I remember going back to the room then I just couldn't wait to get down the pitch so we were all just sort of chilling out and I remember Dave Magali with the masseuse I remember just sitting there chatting to him just about life and about how excited he was about how excited I was and just little moments like that I'll just always like I'll always remember them do you know what was it like seeing your little girl Pippa for the first time after the final she was only probably two days old you yeah. probably hadn't seen her that much in the two days after she'd been born because of being at the final and, or being getting ready for the final I don't know where the trophy actually was that night maybe it was with you your medal I don't know where you stayed but maybe it was the next day when you saw her but that must have been an, an emotional lovely yeah. nice moment no I remember after the game when I came in I just went on the phone to, to FaceTime straight away and um, I was just FaceTime to her there in the house I only got back to the house literally when I lifting the trophy but there's a picture of her do you have her my missus has her held up while I'm lifting the trophy, which is which is nice. Um I think then the next day, it was just the next morning obviously when, when she woke up and obviously I woke up and seen her then got a little picture of her and just ah special. Away grounds, away atmospheres, favourite place to play for St. Pat's that isn't Richmond and that isn't like a European game. Where would you think about and go, I loved going there as a Pats player? Well obviously Talit is like it's a proper arena now. Um but I, I'll always love going to Daily Mount. I love playing in Daily Mount, especially back back in the day, I suppose. Um, the pitch was the, the pitch is still nice, but when sort of the likes of Jason Bowen, Glenn Crow, Owen Hardy, Brian Shelley, all them lads are sort of playing. Um, I remember going there and just thinking it was like a, a proper game, like against proper men, and um, just I just and ever since then I've just always loved going there. Roommates, away trips, European games, or, or some of the cup games overnight or whatever. Who would have been the the main roommates over the years, yeah, yeah. and and the ones where you would have a bit of, a bit of crack with late in the evenings? I would have having Shani O'Connor at the start. I think um, Christy Fagan, Killian Brennan. Um, I don't know if I had Forrester. I had Matty Smith last year, the cup final. Um, so I hope not leaving. I think Clark, yeah, had Clark, he one of them. Hope not leaving anybody out here. But uh, yeah, no, all great, great lads, and um, as you say, great crack. The, the away trips, I, them away trips bring you closer together as a group, and and obviously as personal relationships as well. It's um, you get to know each other, you get to know different different sides of each other. So um, they're good, and thankfully I always had someone that I got on really, really well with, and um, yeah, no, great, great memories. And when you have, uh, I'm sure, time to, to think back and look back as well, The you've got four jerseys behind you, that you've, you've worn so many various different Pats kits home and away and third kits and stuff. Is there a favour that springs to mind, one that you, you really, because you were probably involved in so many of the launches in recent years where you're, you're out for the pictures or you, you've, you've, you've got so many to frame or, or, or give to your family and friends and stuff to, you know, to, 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 to remember and you go, well, that jersey was that season, some great autographs on some of the jerseys behind you as well of teammates and stuff. Uh, no, to be honest, I wasn't really one for. Oh, it's a lovely jersey. I was just. Or you wear it to play. I just wear it because I'm yeah. playing. I wasn't really one. Oh, that's lovely. Like you know, see, see, hear some lads going, "Geez, that that jersey's lovely. The new the new jersey's lovely." But to me, I was never really like that. Um, just wore whatever was was given to me. I suppose. Yeah. you couldn't <laughs> um, really say I'm not wearing that. Yeah, yeah, no. So uh, no, I really hadn't really got one. Um, what, no. what what about other pieces of, of memorabilia bits you've kept, whether they be medals or photos <laughs> or boots or uh, the pennants? Yeah, I've got, I've got a lot of lot of stuff. Um, the lads do slag me about my shin guards. I've got shin guards that 
cricket pads they are that are huge but um, I have them since I'm, I think I was playing for Leeward Celtic like that's gone back that long like so when I was a schoolboy but I still have them now and still wear them to this day because there's actually a picture of them I think it was on the bench for with Danny Nord and Daryl Kavanagh and I'm holding them but they're just they're still 2000 2010 but I still have them now they're the ones I use so with them since I've since I've started um, were they ever lost? Uh, would you ever leave them behind somewhere that a kit man have to find no, them for you? No, no, never. Obviously, no one robbed them. <laughs> <laughs> Some lads don't want to wear shin pads now. They're tiny um, pieces of cardboard going down the sock. But uh, <laughs> no, we've, we've, we've always worn them. I suppose it's not just they're gonna be shin guards. I suppose it's, that's it. But uh, I have them since since the start, and that's really it. I suppose I've got a lot of jerseys and I've obviously the medals that I've won and. Um, so many great pictures as well some not so great that you never let me use on yeah, social media but others that nah, are just there's, brilliant there's a handful of probably all right ones but the rest of them the, the other few hundred of them are, are <laughs> delete are from, yeah, from delete. the Bermo <laughs> folder yeah. there's there's one of, of Ollie is running from the halfway line when Robbie Benson scored the penal ah, I think you and Lee Desmond are in it Yeah. and the ah, emotion it's... on your face is incredible ah, it was just, that was there was so much that came back to me at that time wasn't just the foot, just a lot of stuff from the outside that yeah. came back to me, and I was that was that was on my mind that time, and um, yeah, it was just it was emotional to be to be honest. We'll finish on the future. You've started your your footsteps into coaching. You've got a degree, as you mentioned. You've got a little girl and your missus at home and your family and stuff. So, what does the future hold? Very deep question, I know, and I don't want a long, big, detailed answer. No, but you've yeah. got you you've. You're not just going to stop playing and just sit in the sofa all day. No, no, I'm going to keep playing. Yeah, keep playing till I, till I can't anymore, I suppose. Um, I've sort of got a, the book for a bit of coaching. Um, I'm coaching at the middle of coach over the last few years, so um, we'll see how that goes. And I've nothing concrete planned yet. Yeah. Um, I'll take a break, obviously, at the end of at the end of the year and a couple of months break maybe, and then see what opportunities are out there for me. But. Look, I'm excited about the future. I'm content with the decision. It's not a decision I've made over the last week, or I said, or, or a couple of months, or, or, or the last. It's been coming probably. It's been in the back of my mind, and I think now is the right time. As I said last year, was was just that just topped that just topped off a, a career that I'm that I'm, I'm I'm very happy with. Um, so yeah, I was, if I had it retired at the end of last season, I would have been the happiest man. But I've given another year, and I'll, I'll, I'll be the end of this season. And, Look, I'm looking forward to the future to see what it holds for me and um, again it's exciting it's something new for me it's a new chapter in my life and um, let's see let's see what happens well Bermo from everyone that's saying Pats I know you'll they'll all be in touch with you directly congratulations thank you for all of your efforts on and off the pitch you've been a great person to have on the pitch off the pitch around the club I know I'm speaking for everybody that all send you their own messages so congratulations and the very best of luck thanks for sitting down no problem thank you Jamie